This is Manono Mine, possibly the world's biggest lithium deposit. It contains about 269 million tons of lithium carbonate, and the Chinese battery giant Contemporary Empirix Technology has bought 24% stake in this. Another project in Argentina to mine 20,000 tons of lithium carbonate annually by Zijin, a Chinese gold mining company. Another one under Mariana Lithium Project in Argentina. Then Mexico, Chile, Canada, and many more. But it's not just lithium. Cobalt, another important battery material which is used as cathode in lithium ion batteries, is produced exclusively in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Out of the country's 19 cobalt mines, 15 are either owned or financed by the Chinese companies. When I was doing my research on why China is buying out lithium mines, I didn't realize the deeper meaning until now. Over the next few minutes, we will go through understanding the immense growth of electric vehicle industry in China, then why Chinese companies established an efficient lithium battery supply chain, and then the most important part, seeing everything from the Chinese government's lens that you need to be aware of. Let's start with why Chinese companies are investing so much in batteries. The year 2021 saw a global slowdown in automobile sales due to crunch in semiconductor supplies. In spite of this, the electric vehicle sales in China skyrocketed by 154%. About 1.2 million electric vehicles were sold in China in 2019, then 1.3 million in 2020, and next, straight 150% more, selling 3.3 million electric vehicles in 2021. This was led by BYD, China's local electric vehicle manufacturer, which sold over 600,000 units, followed by Tesla with an estimated 240,000 units. Comparing the EV growth with the US, before 2018, the decade-long subsidies from the Chinese government resulted in outpacing the EV growth in the US over the years. The US side had a good start, but then the lack of support from the government compared to that from the Chinese resulted in widening the gap. But why are EV sales in China so strong? Traditionally, Chinese automobile industry depended heavily on imported oil. Since 1993, China became a net importer and, with time, the imports grew and slowly it surpassed the US to become the top importer of crude oil. This meant a large part of the country's energy requirements were needed to be met by imports, and these imports were not small. In 2020, this was $150 billion, the highest among all nations. This showed two main problems. First, the draining of foreign exchange. But more importantly, the second, the energy security. How? China is the largest vehicle market in the world, both by annual sales and manufacturing output, with local sales of more than $26 million in 2021. This is expected to cross 35 million vehicles by 2025. At such a scale, depending on foreign fuels is a big risk. These worries couldn't be worse after various trade wars and border disputes with its neighbors. Another important point of view is from the manufacturing side. In the traditional automobile manufacturing, China lagged behind the US and Europe for decades. Manufacturing cars and exporting them to key markets at competitive prices has remained a challenge. But in the electric vehicle industry, every country was on the same starting line. China saw this opportunity and acted quickly. As early as 2012, the Chinese government provided $214 in funding for electric vehicle research, primarily for battery technologies, along with tax breaks for factory land. At the same time, China blocked the foreign competition. Starting in 2015, the government created a list of Chinese battery manufacturers that EV makers could use if they wanted to be eligible for subsidies. Foreign companies from Republic of Korea and Japan were excluded from the list. Over the time, with liberal borrowing from the state 
and efficiency of Chinese battery companies. China mastered the supply chain of battery manufacturing. In 2012, Chinese companies supplied lithium batteries for just 10% of electric vehicles sold worldwide. In 2019, this was roughly 50%, and today, supplying 76% of all global lithium batteries. Chinese companies had an early start in manufacturing batteries, which gave them ample time to figure out the supply chain issues, work on them, and create an efficient manufacturing industry when other countries were busy debating and making regulations. Now, let's concentrate on this part. The global automobile industry is worth $2.7 trillion in revenue as of 2021. Many countries are promising their carbon-neutral plans at international climate summits, and most car manufacturers are heading towards lithium batteries as part of the green transition. Now, imagine yourself as a Chinese government. Your country has enormous resources of lithium and manufactures 76% of all global lithium batteries at competitive prices. And the only next competitor is the US at a very distant 8%. Your local companies have a great expertise in the entire supply chain, right from mining lithium to making batteries out of it. What does this mean to you? an incredible control over the global automobile industry. And this is why you need to be aware. Do you recall the trade wars between the US and China? This caused the Chinese economy a slowdown in the industrial output, which was already declining. Many companies shifted their supply chains from China to elsewhere in Asia due to fears of supply issues and the increasing cost of end products. Having monopoly on lithium-ion batteries gives China an upper hand in driving its political interests while giving a firm positioning in the future trade wars. The importance of this can be realized if we place ourselves in the days of the 1970s and 1980s. At that time, the oil-producing OPEC nations announced a trade ban on most countries in the West. This caused the global economy to slow down, leading to high inflation and the energy security for the Western countries came at a risk. Now, in this equation, replace oil with lithium batteries and OPEC nations with China, and we are set. In fact, during the days of the oil embargo, the US and some European countries were producing oil. But we cannot say the same about lithium. Another important reason for awareness is the automobile industry. Let's talk from the perspective of the US. The automobile industry has historically contributed around 3.5% of US GDP and was $1.2 trillion in revenue in 2020. Well, that's a lot of money in cars. And the fact that China, with US had trade wars with, has a good hold on the key part of future vehicles gives out a clear message. US needs to ramp up its battery business and do it fast. Most of what we discussed now also applies to other countries. But there is one point that US has an upper hand on. China imports a staggering $300 billion worth of semiconductors every year. And most of this is controlled by US or its allies. Most electric vehicles depend heavily on semiconductors. Which in other words means that China and West are dependent on each other. But given the sheer manufacturing powers of China, can the US or other countries compete with it on a global stage? If not, can other countries develop secondary markets for recycling lithium once these batteries age? Please share your thoughts in the comment section. This completes our discussion on why China is leading the lithium race and why you need to be aware. All references used in making this video are mentioned in the description. Please refer to them for more information.